Yeah. Is this my best side? It's a bit sunny. We're doing this in the daytime. We don't normally do it in the daytime. We're I know, like... I know. My lighting's all off, but then it's probably hiding a multitude of sins. Hello, music fans. How are you doing? Welcome to Full Record Jacket with Phil and Ben. And today we're doing a marathon recording session. We're going to touch upon all aspects of music. Well, not really all, but um, we're going to talk about quite a few things. And mm. I've got a list of topics. If we're talking about the 90s and technically would be a Snickers now. I think that's when marathon became Snickers. I'm going to check that one because... I'm sure I'm sure it was the 1990s but just bear with me you pad for time again. I think it might have been the 1990s. Our viewers outside the UK may be wondering what on earth we're talking about. I'm sure though international audiences are familiar with the chocolate bar Snickers which contains well, Do you know when it was? Toffee, peanuts, all that stuff inside in just just so you know well, before you announce that Ben um that bar used to be called Marathon in Britain, yes. it had a different brand name, and for years it was known as Marathon, and it was a bit of a, it was a well-known confectionery item. And then they decided to bring it into line with the rest of the world. We had to fall in line and call it Snickers. And, yes. Uh, what year did that happen? It actually happened, which is quite apt, Philip, for me and you. It was 1990. Was it that long ago? Wow. It was 1990. I'm just going to see if I can find the actual date. Um, da, 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 Snickers, here we go. Um don't know how we've, how we've got onto this, but we, we're on there. Um, in the United Kingdom, Snickers was sold under the brand Marathon until 1990. A marathon retro edition was sold exclusively at Morrison's for three months in 2020. Wow. Uh, there we go. You could buy it as a marathon. Yeah. I presume it began. Did it begin? It began in the US? Is it it's a, a North American uh, it origin? It began in the United States in 1930. There you go. I wonder why it's called Snickers. Let, uh, we're on the subject now. Let's um, let's find out. Uh, Mars and Juice Snickers. <laughs> we might uh, as well go all the way on this. Yeah, Marathon until 1990. Mars Line product, Global Snickers name. Was, uh, da, 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 da. Why? Why is Snickers called Snickers? Top search. Um, Mars introduced Snickers, named after the favourite horse of the Mars family, which was called Snickers. There you go. There we go. They were horsing around. Well, it's another American institution that I wanted to talk about in the first show. And what, Oprah? <laughs> well, the question is, and this is topical, because he's go just on. announced that he's releasing a new single. And I believe it's the first single he's done, actually out, out as a single, since 1993. And uh, well, I'm talking about Billy Joel. And the reason in the I, middle of the night, the, the reason I want to talk about him in my sleep. is I need to ask the question: Why is Billy Joel so hated in certain circles? Did you know that Billy Joel was hated? First of all, I know he used to go around and um, scaring old ladies for their pension money. Well, I, I, um, I don't know why that tickled me. It's a, it's a typical you answer that, isn't it? Um, well, let's let's just, first of all, before we go, into, let's recap who Billy Joel is. Um, Billy Joel, isn't he? Yeah, he's an American singer-songwriter, as most people probably know. Started his career in earnest in the early 1970s, became a very big star in the mid-70s in the US and then around the world, had a lot of hit records. He is, we didn't if you look at a list him. of the best-selling artists of all time, he's up there. And in fact, in America, he's apparently the fourth best-selling solo artist in America. And the only artists that have sold more records than him. Michael Jackson. The, Michael Jackson. Can you think of Madonna? Who else? Yeah. Prince? No. Johnny Cash? No. Uh, oh, God, Phil Collins? No, no, you think think further back. Think big megastars uh, from further oh, back. Frank Sinatra? Um, well, no, I mean, even 
arguably even a more megastar than Frank Sinatra. More megastar than the Robert biggest, Johnson. One of the biggest stars in the history of rock and roll. One of the first Elvis. stars. Elvis. Yeah. Oh, okay. I forgot all about him. <laughs> um, he's up there. And I think Elton John is the other one who's who's sold more records in America. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Joel has sold apparently 160 million records, and that's similar to Springsteen. He may be slightly ahead of Springsteen. So commercially, he's a big force, and he's something of a, I gather, you know, something of a national institution in the US. Um, perhaps our, our American viewers can tell us whether I'm right about this, but I'm pretty sure that Billy Joel is a, a big staple of American radio. And he gets played on a lot of different stations because he might appear on the sort of classic rock or classic soft rock, what they call it, soft rock stations. M-O-R. M-O-R. And then he gets played on the 70s pop stations and the 80s pop and stations. And the 90s. Possibly the 90s. And he, he's a sort of general, you know, classic hit stations or whatever. So he, he, he gets on quite a few. And... I need to now tell you my history with Billy Joel before we go into the hatred thing, don't we? Um, my history with him is that I liked him when I was about 10, I think. Um, and it was the Innocent Man album, which I didn't actually buy. My dad actually had this album. And that's the album that features one of his most successful and most hated singles, which is Uptown Girl. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm not a, uh... now, that album, when you hear Uptown Girl in context of the whole album, the album was basically designed as a kind of tribute to doo-wop and 50s rock and roll and the, and the, the Four Seasons and James Brown and various artists. And that most of the songs on there are done in the style of a classic artist. And, and the Uptown Girl is kind of like his Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons Thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so going to check of, if I've got any Billy Joel. Kind of makes um... sense in in the context of the album. But the thing that Billy Joel did for me, and I think Elton John was the other artist when I was about sort of ten or eleven, turned me on to the 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 fact that albums sometimes had other songs on that were just as good as the hits, and albums were sometimes worth listening to all the way through. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I was far too young and naive and uncool to like cutting edge music at that time. But I did have access to some LPs by Elton John and Billy Joel. And so they, you know, they made a, a difference. An impression, an impression. Yeah. So I've always had a little bit of a liking for them since then. And, you know, I, again, I'm not a hater of either. In fact, I enjoy, I still do enjoy. You're a lover, aren't you? Phil? A lot of what You're a lover, both, not a hater. both of them did, even though they may not be cool. And I suppose it's the, um, it's the uncoolness with Billy Joel because now, do you remember in the eighties here in Britain, Phil Collins was massive, and Phil Collins was played on the radio a lot. And even if you listened to Radio One and you were, you know, listening to the current chart music, you still heard a lot of Phil Collins, didn't you? Yeah, and he was considered very uncool at the time, and of course he was so exposed as well. You heard so much about him, saw him on TV so much, people got fed up with him. So it became a thing for music lovers, uh, people who were seriously into their music, to have Phil Collins as the hate guy, yeah? Is that, is that fair to say? I don't mind some Phil Collins, yeah, yeah. I don't mind some Phil Collins, but oh, I wouldn't sit down. I, I wouldn't. So he was, he was seen as the epitome of middle-of-the-road rock that your dad would like, or middle-of-the-road yeah, rock yeah. pop. It, you know, older people like to... And I suppose and Phil Collins uncle. and Billy Joel don't look like rock and roll people either, do they? they, they they're look, not. They literally look like they should be sort of serving down the local spa or teaching you geography. Yeah. So I think Billy Joel has got this kind of reputation in America amongst a lot of serious music fans. Now, of course, he is a massive success. Now, in the last um, 30 years, his career has gone in an interesting direction, because in 1993, he decided he wasn't going to write any more songs. So he did that, remember that song you sang earlier, that River of Dreams, he did that album. River of Dreams, yeah. And the last song on that album was called Famous Last Words, and he basically said, that's all I've got to say. And he stayed true to this for quite a while. He did a, he did a classical piano album, which... Um, 
he was a classically trained pianist. So he did a classical album, which was played by a, a Japanese guy who was a, obviously an even higher quality pianist than him. And it's a bit like so, a bit like Paul McCartney's classical projects. But he didn't do yeah, any yeah. more pop, pop rock albums. And he did a song. I think he did a song for some event. And what was it? I don't. Know, it was the Millennium, but it was some other song that he wrote a one-off song for. Uh, and then he also did a song that went onto a box set. It wasn't released as a single, but it was a love song that he did when he got married again. And he did a song to this new He's wife. He's been married a few times, hasn't he? He's been married at least three times, I think, um, that I know of. I may have been another one in there. But, uh, yeah, he had his first wife, his first wife and her brother ripped him off. Because yes, her they, brother they was his manager. They took a lot of his money, didn't they? His, money. His, bro- her, his brother-in-law was his manager. Um, he then obviously famous, famously married Christy Brinkley. And that lasted about 10 years or so. Maybe a bit longer, and then he's on. He's got it's another wife at the moment, I think, uh, and it may have been another one in between that, but I'm not hot on the gossip. But anyway, he did stay true to this promise not to write any more songs. Now, people tried to get him to write songs. Elton John tried to get him to write songs. Do you remember they did a tour together, or a couple of tours together in the nineties? They did a joint header, you know, equal billing, Billy Piano Joel, Man. yeah, and Elton John, Billy Joel concerts. Um, People like McCartney and Springsteen and others have tried to persuade Joel to write more songs. Garth Brooks, you know, the country artist who's sold Shed Loads of Records, he's a massive Joel fan um, and he's mates with him now. He tried to get him to write some more songs and he still hasn't. Um, There was a talk at one point that Billy Joel was going to write some songs with Pink and she felt that he was on a higher level of musical sophistication than her. So she found it was too, she didn't think it was going to work. So anyway, it would seem that he was just quite happy doing his greatest hits. He's still done concerts all over the world. And of course, in the last 10 years or so, he's done this Madison Square Garden Ga- yes. um, well, residency effect. Residency, hasn't uh, it? Yeah, I did read about that at the time. Now, he lives in Long Island, where he's, his roots are. And My friend lives in Long Island. Really? Well, the, yeah. do they live near the... I think, it's, I think it's Oyster Bay, I think, is where I, Billy Joel I'm, lives. I think they live in South Islip, I think it is. Wherever that is. It's um, the opposite end of North Islip. <laughs> Sounds about right, yeah. So, <laughs> Billy Joel had this thing. He's apparently played Madison Square Garden nearly... 200 times in his I've been career. to Madison Square Garden. You have? I've seen it from outside. I haven't been in. I, I've so. been there. I, w- I went to a concert there in 2003. Saw Fountains of Wayne and then Matchbox 20. Cool. Well, Joel had this good gig. He's, he's going to be bringing it to an end soon, apparently. But he, he had Madison Square Garden once a month. And he was... Obviously, this got interrupted by COVID. But apart from that, he did every month. And... Essentially, what he would do is he would have a helicopter pick him up from his back garden in Long Island, fly him over to Madison Square Garden, land on, I don't know if it's either the roof of Madison Square Garden or the roof of somewhere nearby. Um, it would all be set up for him. He had, he had obviously, his technicians did all the sound check and everything for him. So all he would do is, on the concert day, pop in the helicopter, arrive at Madison Square Garden, have a photo play, with a few, few fans who'd won the competition to have a photo with him, and then go and do the, the gig. Play the Do yeah. the gig, and then on the helicopter back home again. Once a month. Goodness knows how much money he was being paid for this, but obviously it wasn't uh, It wasn't a tenner. Yeah. So, um, and I think he's done eight over 80 shows consecutively sold out at Madison Square Garden. So every single one has been a sellout, and it's sold out months in advance, and he said that he would keep doing it. Unless, if unless one didn't sell out, then he would just stop the thing, and they have. But he's, he's decided now to bring it to an end. But he's now announced and shocked quite a few people by saying he's got a new song which comes out on the first of February, twenty twenty four, and it's called "Turn the Lights Back On." So uh, that's where we are. But the seri- Joel is back. The Joel is back now. Serious music fans in America, if you're a hipster, a hip cool music fan. You have to hate Billy Joel. 
apparently, from what I can gather. I've, I've been reading yeah. a couple of articles on here. There's an article on Slate, which is appropriate because they are slating him. He's listed on here as, he's described in this article as the worst pop singer ever. That's, you know, that's quite a level. That's quite an, pop, so. that's quite an accusation ever, <laughs> isn't it? And this... This one, here's a guy who wrote an article. I mean, we've had things like the Cheeky Girls. and Yeah. Now, here's another one. This is a guy who wrote this article based on a former fan wrote this article. Billy Joel sucks, and it only took me 30 years to realise it. And when you read this article, oh. this guy who used to be a fan, is it's really more about him than it's about Billy Joel. It's about him basically saying... I used to be very uncool and like Billy Joel, and now I'm a lot more cultured, so I don't have to like Billy Joel anymore. And I'm, you know, and I kind of regret being so uncool when I was younger. That's basically what this guy is saying. So I'm not sure if it's really, um, you know, I'm not sure if it's a really good takedown of Joel, that one. But this is um, it's curious, isn't it? So why is he so hated? And why is he not getting enough you know did he did de- well i'm asking the question openly does he deserve a bit more respect from serious music I, fans i think you just get to that point don't you where people it just becomes fashionable to dislike something it's yes. almost like is it like the nelson mandela effect you don't know you kind of you have no idea why you you just do why is it Nelson Mandela? Have I been? Have I missed out on? Uh, that? Have you not heard of the Nelson Mandela effect? I haven't where... heard of the Nelson Mandela effect. No, what's that? Oh, someone's got a jazzy ringtone. Yeah. Um, the Nelson Mandela effect. I think it's something to do that everybody thinks that Nelson Mandela died. I'll, I'll read out the um, correct description sure. for you. I would have thought you would have known this. Phil- I've, not heard of the, I've not heard of the Nelson Mandela effect. I've heard of the Streisand effect. Well, I think it's about the um, about the same sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, effect. Let's have a look. Nelson Mandela effect. The Mandela effect is a type of false memory that occurs when many different people incorrectly remember the same thing. It refers okay. to widespread false memory that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s. Memories are not always precise recordings of events. So what I'm saying is people think they hate him because Because everybody else hates him. Yeah, everybody else hates him. But secretly, secretly, deep down, they actually like him. Are there people who think Nelson Mandela died in prison? I thought it was pretty well known that he he got released. Well, this is the uh, thing. I thought it was the most famous prisoner release of all time. It says here, what is the most famous Mandela effect? Popular examples of the Mandela effect are misremembering Mr. Monopoly wearing a monocle, uh, incorrectly remembering the last name of the Berenstain Bears family. Is that right that Mr. Uh, Monopoly doesn't wear a monocle? Yep. And so you go. Now it's the Mandela effect. And misremembering Mickey Mouse as wearing suspenders or braces or whatever they are. Suspenders, I don't know. Right. Yeah, they um, yeah. So um, yeah. So you sort of you hate him because you you think everybody else hates him, but you actually probably don't hate him. I or can't you... really say anything because I've not listened to enough apart from I did buy the River of Dreams single. I have that on CD single actually and now, tape. Now this is one of the things about Billy Joel that that the criticisms are levelled at him. I think musicians do seem to respect him, a lot of them do, because I think if you're a musician, I think in terms of the piano playing and composition, he's quite, he can be quite complex. You know how people say that the ABBA songs are quite complex when you actually have to learn Radio them? Radiohead. Which... Yeah, well, we know that. But they say, you know, musicologists have quite a lot. You know, people like uh, Elvis Costello and George Martin, the Beatles, but they all respected ABBA because they had this, you know, they said it was quite sophisticated, really, underneath it. It sounds like these simple pop songs, but it's actually quite sophisticated. And some music, I'm not enough of a musician to be able to say this myself, but some say that Billy Joel is a little bit more, um, you know, there's more talent going on there than you might realise in terms of his chords and melodies, whatever. But in terms of his themes... See, lyrically, he's not um, 
he doesn't do abstract lyrics. He's not like Bob Dylan or something like that. His lyrics are quite straight talking generally. So that can that can be a cause of disrespect because it's seen as being maybe a bit simplistic everyman music rather yeah, than yeah. arty. He's not, there isn't really much artistic pretension with Billy Joel. It's kind of pretty straight out songwriting, um, pretty mainstream stuff. But then, you know, Paul McCartney's often like that as well. And he gets a bit more respect. Although, of course, Paul McCartney has been massively dissed and disrespected as well over the years. But see, Paul's got a bit of an invisibility, I'll say invisibility, a protection shield, hasn't he? Because even if people slag off all of his solo career, he was still a Beatle. So yeah, yeah. He's, he's still got that credibility uh, shield, whereas yeah. Billy, Billy Joel doesn't have that. So, um, but yeah, Billy Joel, very he's quite McCartney-ish in a lot of ways when you listen to some of his songs um, on the albums. It's definitely one of the biggest influences on him. Ray Charles also influenced him quite a lot. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. So he was, yeah, a lot of musicians seem to, you know, acknowledge his talent. Elton John certainly seemed to see him as an equal. But because he's not seen as sort of an artist who's pushing the boundaries or being cutting edge, because a lot of his songs are kind of, in a way, you could say they're kind of genre exercises or they're, they're done in the style of something he heard. Like, and he's admitted this himself. You know, the River of Dreams that you just mentioned is not a million miles away from some of the stuff Paul Simon was doing because it yeah, has that, yeah. kind of, that kind of African influence on it. And there's songs in his canon that sound a little bit like Sting or ones that are a bit like Paul McCartney or was a bit like, you know, a lot of them have got a reference point. You could say... Oh, he's doing a bit of a Springsteen style song here, you know. So there is that about him that people say, well, he's Einstein, kind of. Einstein, James Dean, Brooklyn's kind of, got a winning team. Now, he has got these two songs, hasn't he, that are, that whenever Billy Joel comes up, there's two songs that people who dislike him will quote. And it's either Uptown Girl that people hate because it's seen as a cheesy, yeah, cheesy yeah. pop song, uh, a wedding disco song, you know. And then there's We Didn't Start the Fire, which some people love because they love all the lyrics and they find it interesting. And then there are people who hate it because they just think it's cheese. Now, Harry Billy Truman, Doris Day, Red China, now, Johnny Ray. Joel himself is not a big fan of We Didn't Start the Fire because he thinks it's musically very limited and he doesn't think much of it as a composition. He thinks it's the sort of thing that almost anybody could have written because he basically got all the lyrics from putting all these historical events together. But I suppose it's been quite educational for a lot of kids. It's used in schools and things, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, it's, but it works well in concert because everybody knows it. Now, I've actually, I've actually seen Joel live. I've only seen him once. And that was back in the early 90s at Earl's Court. And I have to say, and I have, I have heard one or two concert recordings over the years, he could have been a stand up comedian because he's got quite a personality and he is quite self-effacing when he's on stage and he's quite yeah, he's quite amusing and he's got stories to tell about the songs and he's he's a much more engaging showman in that sense in terms of communicating with the audience than many other people that I've seen I mean you know, Bob Dylan yeah you know, I as you know I love Bob Dylan I've got every Bob you do. Dylan You've got Bob Dylan pajamas I've got I I love Bob Dylan I've seen Bob Dylan um, but the thing about Bob Dylan is he doesn't very often talk to the audience. Well, that's kind of part of the thing with Bob Dylan, because you kind of, I kind of like Bob Dylan to be this slightly distant figure and this slightly unknowable, and have all this mystique around it. So I don't mind the fact that he doesn't really talk to the audience. But, you know, if you want someone who does talk to the audience, that's what Billy Joel does, you know, and he has a bit of a joke with the audience. Engages. Another thing I like about him is he, his shows sell tickets, um, and obviously you can get lower price tickets if you're further back. Uh, what Joel does is the two front rows around the stage do not get sold, and what he does is he picks at random. They do a draw of all of people who've bought the cheapest tickets, and they get well, they basically win the lottery. They get to be in the front two rows. And the reason he wants that is because he wants genuine fans 
to be at the front of the concert and not just rich people who've been able to buy the tickets to show off that they were in the front row. So all these genuine Joel fans who've having their, you know, their dream, perhaps it's the only time they're ever going to see him, they get to be in the front row. That's quite quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The GJFs. Yeah. I haven't heard this new song. It's premiered. I think you might be premiering it at the Grammys. And um Well it is award season at the moment, so it won't be too long before the Grammys are <laughs> Yeah. So that's my question. Is Billy Joel unfairly slagged off or does he does he truly suck? Give us your views, viewers. Tell you someone who's a Billy Joel fan that you might be surprised. Mrs. Joel? Brett Anderson from Swade. Oh, is he? Yeah. I was listen I was um I had a bit of uh, Swade on the other day because I was watching a a Brit prop Brit Brit pop program from Channel Five. It was on the YouTube and um Oh, it didn't half take me back, Philster. So, um, yeah, I was listening to a bit of Britt Anderson. He was sort of saying about the sort of influences behind him. But he didn't mention the Joel. That wasn't one of his influences. No, I know he was into I remember reading an interview and he said he quite liked a lot of mainstream music, so he didn't care that it was uncool. And this was yeah, in the yeah. 90s. This was at the height of Swade being cool. And he said, yeah, I like Billy Joel and I like Prince and I like all these, like a lot of this mainstream stuff. So... I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I do quite like yeah. Brett Anderson. Brett Anderson does seem quite a nice guy to meet, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he's very down to earth. I mean, so back that's... in the day, I thought I thought it was a bit, you know, when you're sort of like a teenager and there's somebody, you know, it was the early 90s, weren't used to the effeminate male, really. Boy George was probably no, the only the, one. You, you came on the scene and changed everything. I did, yeah, basically. I'm trying to say, Phil <laughs> <laughs> trying to say, so trying to say. But yeah, no, I, I don't mind Swade now. I think I even said to you the other day we need to listen to more Swade. We'll do uh, it. My ears, my ears have matured. We're going to do another show. We've got plenty of other things to discuss, and I'm going to ask whether various other things suck or not, or have things to say. But for that, viewers, thanks for watching. We will be back with another one very soon.